Hello, I'm Mirelia, I'm a Eurodesk intern, and today we are here to talk about the Bluey Blue Book internship. We are here with Sam, who is currently now doing an internship with the European Commission. Uh, so, hello Sam, how are you? I'm very well, thank you, how are you? Fine, fine, really good today that we have a little Sam. Definitely. So, maybe can you do a short presentation of yourself? Yes, uh, so I'm Sam, I'm French and Dutch, um, and I've been at the European Commission uh, for the last four months. Um, so I'm with DJ IAC, which is the Director General for uh, Youth, Education, Sport and Culture. It took me two months to learn that by heart. Um, <laughs> but yes, that's what I do. I'm in the unit specifically for Youth Education and uh, Erasmus Plus. Um, and yeah, that's it. And how do you discover about this internship and why did you decide to apply? <clears throat> well, honestly, I don't remember the exact moment that I discovered it for the simple reason that I've kind of always, you know, since my mid-teens, let's say, I wanted to um, work for the European Union in some capacity. Um, so it's just something that I've always kind of l looked for, essentially. So I probably just discovered it by Googling it, but yeah. Yeah, so you decided to apply because it was just like what it's you wanted to do. It's something I wanted to do. Uh, at least it's something I was very much considering for, honestly, as long as I've been thinking about a career. Mm -hmm. But also I, I did know people um, that were doing it uh, when I was studying back in Leiden. <clears throat> and so, you know, I, I, I was in contact with people who were doing it and spoke very highly of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I also remember that the Facebook targeted ads would target it, like the ads to me. So I just saw it coming along on my Facebook feed. I was like, oh, I need to apply now. Yeah. And that's, that's what I did. Perfect moment. <laughs> and how did you apply? Well, uh, the application procedure is only one way, really, and that's uh, online. Um, mm -hmm. And it's a whole process that takes, um, I believe, about four to five, four to six months. Uh, I think I checked today, I think it took me like five months the entire thing between the moment I applied and the moment I knew I was selected. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it's, it's exclusively online. Um, and what do you need in order to apply? How is like the selection process? Okay, uh, well, I'll go step by step. Mm -hmm. um, so first, um, you write your application online. So you have to fill in a whole uh, form, which includes essentially what your CV would be, um, but also um, your motivation and your suitability. Mm -hmm. There's a limit on the amount of characters you can use for everything. Uh, it's it's hard to condense all the information you need to condense into such a small paragraph. Yeah. Um, so that's the first step and challenge, really. After that, if you make it through, which is not everyone by far, um, you are pre-selected, in which case, uh, think about maybe two months later, you know if you're pre-selected. Uh, and then they warn you and you have a week to upload all your supporting documents. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, proof of study, of, you know, your, your diplomas, it's everything that you've mentioned in there. Also the pr proof of the languages you, you are able to speak. So if you have like, a diploma in German, you need to be able to prove that. Um, so you need to upload those documents. Then there's uh, an eligibility check. So if you actually didn't lie on everything, yeah. I hope for most people that's fine. Um, and from there, um, I believe you might, yeah, you may or may not be selected mm -hmm. to be in the blue book. That doesn't mean that you get the traineeship necessarily. It just means that you're in the blue book. From that moment, directorates and units and director generals, etc., can elect to contact you um, or not, or just directly select you. It's kind of it's kind of like internal lobbying, basically. Mm -hmm. So the directors themselves select would-be trainees and then either they interview them or not, usually they do. Um, and then on the basis of that, you are selected and get an offer. Okay, but it's just them who can contact you, you cannot contact them no. directly? Well, <clears throat> that's a good question. Um, so when preparing for uh, my traineeship, as in when I was in the application procedure, mm -hmm. I you know, I inform myself and um, a lot of people recommend to lobby for a position as in like when you're pre-selected, you do get access um, to email addresses and 
and also you can just find them publicly online a lot of them yeah so a lot of some people suggest that you should lobby for a position as in send out emails and be like hey look this is where i'm suitable the european commission doesn't officially condone that uh, they don't say don't do it they don't say do it it's just some people recommend that you do that mm -hmm. uh, in my personal experience that has not made any difference at all you didn't do it I did do it because I think mm -hmm. it's smarter to do it anyway, maybe. Um, but maybe I should also mention that I um, applied multiple times. I only got it, well, the last time, obviously. But mm -hmm. um, so I also know kind of what does and doesn't work. Um, but anyway, every person that I lobbied or every position that I lobbied for, um, mostly you just get ignored. Uh, sometimes they say thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like, or just like kind of generic thank you messages. It didn't, the one, <clears throat> excuse me, the position I did get in the end, uh, I did not lobby for. Um, and okay. I, from the people that I've talked to, which is, you know, it's a small sample size, but uh, no one got positions that they lobbied for. Mm -hmm. So take from that what you will. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's interesting because you said <clears throat> that now, as you applied several times, you know what it was and what not. Yes. So, which advice will you give to the people that want to apply? Okay, well, the first thing, uh, and this is not, this is firstly something that I did well in all my applications, I think, is that you need to be prepared, mm -hmm. um, as in, and think a few steps ahead. Because, well, like I mentioned earlier, uh, there is a step where you need to upload documents, um, and you have essentially a week. And it's a strict deadline. You have a week to upload all the documents, but you also need, to, obviously, to have those documents at hand. And for example, uh, let me think, well, obviously, it scans of your passport and a few diplomas, but also like the sort of diplomas that you might not have thought of for a long time, like language diplomas. Like I have a Goethe Institute uh, German certificate. Mm -hmm. I actually even forgot that I had that to begin with, you know, but you, you just need to have those ready because you have that one week to do it. And if you're abroad, and actually, I was abroad when I uh, got that email. Um, well, it, it can be stressful, so be prepared and I mean, the whole process takes very long, uh, from like you hearing back from them, yes. but they expect you to be very quick in how you send them information and, um, and such. So that's my first tip. Um, and apart from that as well, when you're actually writing your application, it is, um, so like I said. I know what not to do and what to do, or at least what worked. It's not necessarily clear cut. It's what worked and what didn't work. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I was a lot more successful in the applications where I very intelligently um, or very sort of targeted my keywords in what I wrote because, you know, thousands of people apply. Yes. Um, they are not going to read all of the, all of the application, not immediately at least. Uh, so I, you know, I'm not speaking directly for the commission, this is my experience, but mm -hmm. they look at least first for keywords. Um, so make sure you put your keywords in there and make them relevant to the position you're applying for. That's maybe the most important thing I think you can do uh, when actually writing your application. So be really specific and maybe also that can catch the attention? Yes. Um, and keyword specific to to the European Union mm -hmm. and their priorities, for example, um, yeah. but also let's say um, for the your preferred uh, director general, look at what their program looks like and mm -hmm. sort of target your keywords to be relevant at least, if not directly, um, yeah, relevant to what they're doing. That's good. So thank you for the advice. And now let's talk about your internship. What are yes. you doing? Well, um, <clears throat> I am officially assigned to the program sector within the, the Director General for Education Culture. Um, within that, I have kind of moved around on through a variety of projects. Um, it can be attending meetings, taking notes for the meetings, uh, but it could also be, you know, contacting third uh, parties and um, like by, by phone and um, it, it, there's really a large variety of things. It could be setting up an event as well, mm -hmm. something I've um, contributed to. There's 
in my experience, and I know that other people have different experiences, but in my experience, it's, it, there was a very large variety and I get to work with a large variety of people, which I really enjoy. That's really nice. That sounds really interesting. And what were your favorite, like, what are your favorite tasks and like the challenges that you had so found? Okay. Well, my favorite task so far and probably the most challenging as well was to, um, well, set up an event, um, that was targeted at or that was aiming to attract uh, new stakeholders to, um, the European Solidarity Service, which is called the European Solidarity Corps, mm -hmm. uh, which is in the process of evolving in this this year, essentially 2022. Um, so we had to set up an event, but it was there was a very very strict deadline. We had a couple of weeks to do it, uh, and I, I don't know. I enjoy working under pressure, I guess. Um, but yes, it, it meant that I had to go through. I think hundreds of uh, summaries of people's experiences of volunteering through uh, the European Solidarity Corps or its predecessors, which have different names, but um, and just learning about those experiences and see how we can improve on that essentially, and then prepare a presentation for that to present at an exposition, uh, like a live one, which is kind of rare in those in today's times. But yeah, that was very interesting. Um, Sorry, was there a follow-up to that question? Like, were the challenges that you had? The challenges. Well, I mean, this is getting probably uh, like a little bit boring to hear at this point, but um, just not being able to work in an office mm -hmm. due to COVID and the COVID restrictions is, and this is universally true, I guess, but uh, it's, it's been hard. Um, I do not focus as well when I'm working from home. Yeah. Obviously, personal thing, but I, I do not like that. Uh, the rules at the commission have changed throughout my traineeship. Um, it used to be that you could come to the office pretty much whenever you wanted. You don't, you don't have to. But you had to go once a week at least. Now it's changed to maximum once a week, which is just a shame. Like it, It's a shame when you get your opportunity to network and meet people and then... And then you have to the, Yeah, on. exactly. Yeah. And well, how do you think that this experience will affect in your future career? Well, I have mentioned that I wanted a career at the European Union, so I think it's very useful for that. Mm -hmm. um, but even excluding that, sort of, if I didn't want to have a career the, with the European Commission or any EU institution, I think it's extremely valuable um, in, in honestly many ways because it's it's a very prestigious position. Uh, the Blue Book is very highly regarded, mm -hmm. um, so it, it will help you land. Whether, like it, it's good. It's good for your CV, essentially, if you want to look at it that way. Um, but also, just if you are looking for a position within uh, the European institutions or any kind of international organization or anything even adjacent to that, uh, I think it's incredibly valuable. You learn, um, well, you learn sort of the intricacies and how the how at least the European Commission functions on the uh, on an organizational level um, and. Also because, so the people you work with, um, so European Commission has various things, programs set up to help you network and learn more. Uh, those aren't sort of, you don't have to do them, um, but it's very nice that they're there essentially. So we, for example, every week I have a training session on a different aspects, uh, like a different aspect of the program within my director, mm -hmm. which is just, you know, interesting and useful to learn more about the wider institutions. Um, but also things organized by trainees themselves, um, networking events, there's a lot of those. Uh, and not even actually, um, well, like I said, I'm Dutch, part Dutch, which means that the permanent representation of the Netherlands to the European Union also tries to help me in networking and setting up events for me. For example, tomorrow I'm meeting uh, Frans Timmermans, who's an important person within the European Union, and that meeting is set up through the Dutch permanent representation. So you get a lot of support from your own nation, from the European Union, because mm -hmm. they want you to succeed at this point, <clears throat> which is honestly great. Like it's in their best interest for you to succeed, and it's obviously in your best interest to succeed. So it's just nice to get all that support. And for that reason, on top of the other reasons I gave, it's incredibly 
an incredibly valuable experience, I think. So you will definitely recommend this experience? I would recommend it to everyone, even to Eurosceptics, honestly. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, so thank you a lot for the Thank interview. you for having me. Thank you.